Welcome to the Friends and Family Discount Podcast. I'm your host, D'Angelo, where you at? I want you to close your eyes, imagine the cool waves, and enjoy your listen. My name is D'Angelo, where you at? I am the owner and creative director of Ocean Fourth, and this is my journey. This is a long journey I've been going on with Ocean Fourth. Um, I've been running a business since 2017, but I actually started off with another brand at the beginning of my journey called IDM. I started that right after high school. Um, it started out with just me having an idea of inspiring people and, um, allowing people to just to be creative within themselves and just see, uh, full possibilities, full potentials in within themselves. Um, IDM stand for um, Impossible Dream Makers. The slogan was Dream Impossible. And I, I just wanted to create that to give the people something to look at and something positive to wear. So the first time I actually made a shirt for IDM was um, right after high school, as soon as I started the brand. And um, I actually hand painted the shirt. Um, I had two of them. I did one black, one white, and I just cut a layout out and I painted it. And it, it was something so little and something so basic, but it, it meant so much to me. And just it basically just kickstarted the whole journey of me wanting to create a brand. Um, so I actually thought of Ocean Fourth the same year within me making IDM and I came up with the concept of the brand just sketching and stuff like that but the name actually come from um, me and just what inspired me so Ocean Force is really a two part name but it means one thing Uh, so Ocean comes from basically just my inspiration so um, in Oklahoma City, you didn't have an ocean, and that's where I grew up at. I was born and raised there. Um, I didn't, I didn't have no ocean to look at. So the closest thing we had to the ocean was like Hefner. Um, just looking at it, looking at the waves, looking at the water. Um, it, it really inspired me. Like every time I had a, a a thought, or just something special in my head, or just something in my head that I wanted to release to make something cool um i used to just go to lake hefner and it just it cleared my mind out of being around the water um looking at the waves and just it, it was just very peaceful and i was given most of my creative thought from lake hefner so i was just thinking of like a bigger picture um was was the big bigger picture of a lake and i imagine the ocean um i imagine myself reaching my full potential of creativity with with looking at an ocean, um, being on the beach, just looking at the waves, clearing my mind. And um, yeah, so fourth comes from me. So my birthday is uh, June 4th. And I wanted just to give the consumer a piece of me within my brand. And um, yeah, so I, I just want to combine both of the things that I feel like make me and inspire me and my creativity and I just wanted to give it back to the consumers. So my first, so the first shirt that I dropped for Ocean Fourth was a shark shirt. So the whole story behind that um, and me making clothes for Ocean Fourth, backtrack a little bit. I actually learned a lot from IDM. Um, I made a couple shirts and made a couple hats for IDM. And I, I really just feel like IDM was just like, just to start up like the learning brand for me, just to go full force with Ocean Fourth because it taught me a lot. Um, it taught me how to uh, buy shirts in bulk. It taught me how to go to print companies to um, get get your shirts made. It taught me uh, what type of material shirts I should make. Um, it taught me how to embroider a little bit. Um, it taught me how to get wholesale items. It told me how to sell. It, it just taught me a whole bunch of things to prepare me for Ocean Fourth. And I feel like Ocean Fourth wouldn't be where it's at today without IDM. Um, 
but to go back to Ocean Fourth, uh, so the first shirt I made for Ocean Fourth was a shirt that had a shark on it, and uh, I dropped some hoodies that said Atlantic and Pacific on it. So the backstory with that, um, I was actually working at Lids. Shout out to my manager Evan. Um, he came through. He allowed me to actually embroider my stuff at the store. Um, I was the assistant manager. I came in early to stitch my stuff. I stayed a little bit later after I closed to stitch my stuff. Uh, just stuff to, you know, really just push my brand and just create my vision. Um, so when I created that stuff, I learned how to use a embroidering machine. And that still helped me today because I use a embroidering machine also with some of my drops. And uh, I'm very grateful because after I created my first shirt, I had some of my photography friends, shout out to Timmy and Raven, they came through. We went up to um, the Ferris wheel in Oklahoma City and we just snapped a couple of pictures. And then, uh, yeah, and then my other drop with the hoodies, uh, I grabbed my my brothers, my friends, uh, my homies, um, and we did a photo shoot up there. And it was kind of like a full circle moment because I shot that one at Lake Hefner. And like I said, um, that's basically like my inspiration of the brand. Uh, I dropped hoodies and headbands. And then what really like kickstarted my journey was um, I had some close friends that was in BSA, which is Black Student Association at my university. Went to the University of Central Oklahoma and they was like, we're looking for vendors for this little fashion show we're having. So I was like, cool, I'll, I'll be in it because that was like my first little pop-up shop that I ever had done um, for Ocean Fourth. So with that, it was kind of like, it was kind of like a whoa moment. Like I never experienced this before. I don't know what to expect, this and that. And I actually sold out of the shark shirts and um, sold some hoodies. And that was just a phenomenal moment just to hear people coming up to me saying it's a dope design, this this is pretty cool, this and that. Um, they actually had models walking in my clothes. And it was just like so surreal. I was like, wow, this is like really amazing um, that people was actually rocking with it. And, you know, for somebody just starting out, I feel like you should always just lean towards support and uh, support's a big thing when you're just starting out. Um, I had some friends buy some stuff. I had uh, strangers buy some stuff. And it was just all love and I, I really appreciated that moment in time. But yeah, just going in with my journey some more. Um, I actually moved from Oklahoma City to Seattle and that journey, I actually took a year off of Ocean Force, which is kind of a big deal uh, because just imagine like you, your, your brand is growing, your brand is doing this, and then you move to another state. You have a lot of worries and doubts because you, you're not sure if people are still going to rock with you. You're not sure if um, how you're still going to make product. You're, you're just unsure about a lot of things. And um, you don't have like the same audience. I didn't even have a website at the time, so I was just lost in the sauce. So, um, but I, I needed that year off just to gather my um, my thoughts, gather my brand, be fully prepared for when I redrop. And um, I'm blessed to have people still rock with me during that moment. So I took that year off. I had got me a um, a machine to actually print my clothes. Um, I had my embroidery machine, so I was stitching clothes. And that was just a whole new experience. I feel like uh, God put me in positions where each and every position I am in my journey is kind of like preparing me for the next step. And it's just teaching me lessons to keep pushing forward, but also just different ways that I can grow my brand. Um, so, yeah, I began doing that uh, when I moved out there after I re relaunched my brand. 
I have to take my own photos. Um, I have to model my own stuff. Um, I have to make my own clothes. I had to run my own website. It was just like a, it was a lot. It was, it was a whole bunch. And um, shout out to my wife, um, Jasmine, uh, Square Butter J. I don't know which one you know her as, but um, she helped me a lot through that journey. Um, we support uh, modeling, just a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, shout out to her for real. Um, and shout out to my friends that, you know, kept supporting me uh, as soon as I did do my relaunch. Um, so, uh, a couple friends bought some stuff and that, that was, that was a real, like, that was like a big hug, like a air hug, because like, I wasn't sure people was going to rock with me and it was just a, it was a crazy thing. Um, but within that journey, I learned to, uh, repackage myself with my social media and, um, also my, my look of the brand. And we here today, um, and a lot of people, you know, a lot of people still rock with me. I re, redid my stuff. I'm gaining followers. I'm gaining friends. I'm gaining family. And, um, I'm grateful to be in the position I am today to grow and just, um, inspire people and have people inspire me and just give that full support of everybody that's creating and you know I just feel like it's it's just a good space right now it's a it's a good space bad bad time of bad time of all this COVID and stuff but it's just a good space for creators just to create support each other and uh, grow all together How do you feel about friends and family discount? Does it bother you? Does it offend you? So the friends and family discount is a question that people have asked me a lot um, just throughout my journey. Uh, does it offend me? At first, it really did bother me a lot. I'm not gonna lie. Just because it's like, I put so much work into this. Um, my profit margin at the beginning wasn't even like a big thing. Um, I'm not about to like just charge people crazy prices if they don't even know me. So it was just like, I was making like probably like two or three bucks, if that. And it was just like, bro, like, I just, I just didn't understand. But I should have understood because uh, I, I worked at Foot Locker for about like a year or two and, um, you know, people ask you that question, like, you gonna slot me a discount, you gonna let me use your, your work discount, this and that. And that's how just people are if you're selling anything. And, you know, when you're younger, you take that personal, but it's just like, it's part of the game. People are gonna be people, um, people is gonna ask questions, people is gonna uh, try to, you know, get the best offer. And like, I really can't knock them, but I mean, I, I do feel like Friends and family discount is a big thing. And, um, you know, if, if you really respect the craft, I feel like you should respect that person's value and how they value their brand. It's all about respect. The them masking is cool, but it's like, do you really respect their brand? If you respect their brand and just fully see how they're wanting to envision their stuff. I feel like you should just respect their respect. Well, you know, respect what they're doing. If you really want it, you'll get it at the end of the day, honestly. But I mean, it's also like, it don't hurt to ask because you just never know. Different creators work differently. Um, but yeah, the friendly friend discount friends and family discount is something that um, the question comes along a lot and I feel like creators should speak on this because a lot of people is misinformed just the regular consumer is misinformed or just if that's offensive or not and uh, that's the reason why I created this podcast and this platform so 
consumers and other creators can feel comfortable about um, talking about this and um, looking from the outside in from the consumer's aspect to see like is this offensive because a lot of people don't even like take it that deep like she's like okay I'm just asking I'm just asking a question like don't hurt to ask um, the worst thing they can say is no and I mean like with some creators they feel like they feel obligated to say yes or they feel obligated to um, you know not decline them and I mean it's it's hard for some creators to even just talk about it because it is like kind of uncomfortable for them uh, but yeah that's why I, I had this uh, platform so you can just get a taste of just different creators and different mindsets of how they respond to this question and um, what their thoughts is about it. Why is investing in creators so important? So investing in creators is very important because um, creators is everything. Literally, if creators wasn't on this earth, it wouldn't be nothing on this earth. Like, everybody's a creator. Like, everybody can create but it's like for the people that actually go forth and try to create, even if it's from a little, little, um, even if it's little or even if it's big, creators creating is just like, like the best thing ever. And like people should support that. People should, when I say invest, I, I take that as like supporting. Supporting is investing in a creator, taking your own time investing your time into someone by giving them a follow, giving them a, a retweet, um, a shout out, a comment, a like. Literally all that is so small, so simple, but that's investing in the creator and supporting the creator. And um, I wouldn't be in the position I am today if I didn't have people investing in me and supporting me, um, many of my friends that's creators wouldn't be in a position they're at if they didn't have that support and people investing in them. Um, investing in creators is a top tier thing that I believe that everybody should look into. And um, you don't have to support everything that's just fire, not fire, but just support everything that's popular. Support something that you truly love or truly like and something that catches your eye and just support that i mean it's it's good to support everything honestly but in reality just give like your full support towards something that you fully support and love um you'll give the 100 percent there and not just you know halfway you know percent but it's, it's always good to support all around anyway just because um everybody has to grow um i believe just local Shop local, support local, everything local. I believe that's good. Um, even if you find somebody from a different state, but if they're small and they're dope, you know, that's local. Um, just just shop small, support small, because um, it's always good for uh, people to grow. And I mean, big brands, they're going to grow. And I just feel like, the smaller people that's trying to make it to the big brands, um, they need that support also because the bigger brands also started small when they first started, and they had that support to push them up. I always love the, like the underdog story type of thing. Um, I believe everybody that's small and local they're underdogs because it's so easy for them to get overlooked if they're dope or just if they have a business or anything or if they're creating. And um, the importance of them getting out and um, being shared and uh, looked at is very important because it, it motivates people. They're just everyday people trying to start something and trying to live out their dreams. And, and that's the most important thing is living out your dream and living out something that you love, passionate about, and having support in that community of people looking out for them and I, I believe that's that's something important and something good.